So things in the AI space are really starting to heat up. Just this week, it was reported that Mark Zuckerberg is personally assembling a super intelligence team of roughly 50 elite researchers, with offers of seven to nine figures apparently being thrown around. Meanwhile, OpenAI finally dropped O3 Pro, and the reactions from the community have been pretty mixed. Some are impressed, others not so much. But overall, as you'll soon see, this model release was like no other. And at the end of this video, we'll be looking into a resurfaced theory about why Sam Altman was fired back in late 2023. And it gets pretty weird, to say the least. Let's get into it. Alright, so first up, probably the biggest story of the week, Meta is launching a brand new super intelligence lab. As it says here, Mark Zuckerberg is personally creating a new super intelligence team dedicated to building the world's most advanced AI platform and splashing out nine-figure packages to hire top talent. It was also reported that Scale AI founder Alexander Wang would join the lab after Meta invested billions into Scale AI to bring over some of their employees. I guess one of those employees they managed to bring over was the literal CEO. If you're not familiar, Scale AI is a leading data labeling company that supports many of the top AI players. And its founder, Alexander Wang, made headlines a couple years ago for becoming the youngest self-made billionaire at just 24 years old. So yeah, this guy is no joke. And now, he's teaming up with the Zuck. The article also mentions that Zuckerberg has been personally leading recruiting for the team of about 50, even rearranging Meta's offices so the new hires sit next to him. So clearly, he's taking this super seriously. The report also notes that he's been frustrated with Meta's current AI pace, which honestly isn't surprising. And so now, he's taking matters into his own hands. So yeah, we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on this. And as soon as there's any new info, I'll definitely let you guys know. Now, speaking of Meta, just a few days after that announcement, they also dropped VJEPA2. That's short for Video Joint Embedding Predictive Architecture. Basically, it's Meta's attempt at building a real-world understanding model. Or, in simpler terms, a world model that learns by watching video and predicting what's going to happen next. This is exactly the direction Meta's chief AI scientist, Yan LeCun, thinks we need to go. He's been saying for a while now that LLMs alone won't get us to AGI. And honestly, I agree, at least to some extent. According to LeCun, world models, ones that actually learn from perception and interaction, are key to getting machines that understand the world like we do like humans. Obviously though, we're just not there yet. LLMs still reign supreme, at least for now, and while VJEPA2 is a solid step forward, hardly anyone's talking about it. I mean, even Zuckerberg has seemingly moved on. Now, probably the second biggest story of the week, OpenAI has finally dropped O3 Pro. According to OpenAI, it has about a 64% average win rate over the previous O3 model, meaning users preferred it in nearly two-thirds of side-by-side -side comparisons. Which, I mean, given it's the pro version, it's kind of expected. Now, if we dive into the benchmarks, you'll see noticeable gains in math, science, and especially coding. The O series has been improving rapidly in programming tasks, and O3 Pro continues that trend. And when tested on these same benchmarks four times in a row to measure reliability, it also came out looking more consistent overall. But now, how has the community been reacting to it? Well, first of all, you have to realize that this isn't your typical model. O3 Pro is more like an AI system. It has access to a bunch of tools that work on the backend, and it tends to perform better with longer, more complex prompts. So maybe don't be like this guy who just said hi to it and ended up with an $80 bill. Another thing I've been seeing is that not only does it take super long for the model to respond, but it will also sometimes just fail without explanation. And probably the most surprising thing, according to early tests, O3 Pro High actually performs worse than O3 High on Arc AGI 1 and 2. For context, the Arc AGI challenge is designed to test the model's ability to generalize and reason. And so, this drop in score definitely raised some eyebrows. But then, I've also been seeing posts like this. 
where O3 Pro one-shotted a problem that other models completely struggled with. So it's not a clear win or loss, more like a mixed bag, depending on how you use it. Again, it's intended more for harder, complex problems. And for the majority of use cases, you're better off using a cheaper, faster model. Speaking of cheaper, faster models, OpenAI actually reduced the cost of O3 by 80% along with this release. So while you probably don't have access to O3 Pro, at least O3 is now much cheaper. Sam Altman also dropped a new blog post this week, titled The Gentle Singularity, where he basically laid out what the future might look like. I covered this in full in my last video, but basically he claims that we have passed the event horizon and that the takeoff has started. Humanity is close to building digital super intelligence. And at least so far, it's much less weird than it seems like it should be. So yeah, a pretty wild opener to a pretty wild blog post. I definitely recommend giving it a read or checking out my last video if you haven't already. Now, here's something that flew a little bit under the radar. Apparently, a secret meeting was held with some of the world's top mathematicians with the goal of outsmarting AI. As it says here, 30 of the world's most renowned mathematicians traveled to Berkeley, California, with some coming from as far away as the UK to face off in a showdown with a reasoning chatbot. The reasoning chatbot in question was OpenAI's O4 Mini, and each problem that O4 Mini couldn't solve would garner the mathematician who came up with it a $7,500 reward. The 30 attendees were split into groups of six, and for two days, the academics competed against themselves to devise problems that they could solve, but that would trip up the AI reasoning bot. So they don't really get into the results, but here are some of the hilarious or maybe shocking quotes from the meeting. One participant says, I was not prepared to be contending with an LLM like this. I've never seen that kind of reasoning before in models. That's what a scientist does. That's frightening. And another, there's proof by induction, proof by contradiction, and then proof by intimidation. If you say something with enough authority, people just get scared. I think O4 Mini has mastered proof by intimidation. It says everything with so much confidence. Now, by the end of the meeting, pretty much everyone was second-guessing the nature of mathematics. And they concluded that mathematicians may shift to simply posing questions and interacting with reasoning bots to help them discover new mathematical truths in the future, much the same as a professor does with graduate students. So yeah, pretty insane. And here's just one more statement. I've been telling my colleagues that it's a grave mistake to say that generalized artificial intelligence will never come. That it's just a computer, Ono says. I don't want to add to the hysteria, but in some ways, large language models are already outperforming most of our best graduate students in the world. In other AI news, Apple held their annual WWC event this week. I was actually planning to make a whole video on it, but surprisingly, or maybe not so surprisingly, they barely even talked about AI at all. The main highlight was their new liquid glass display, which to be fair is pretty cool. But when it comes to AI, the only real new feature was buried in watch OS, something called Fitness Buddy. And yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's an AI assistant that can reason across your past fitness data your runs, your workouts, your habits, and try to motivate you in real time. Kind of like a personal trainer, except it doesn't actually create workout plans, at least not yet. But I could definitely see the potential with this. We also saw Google release a new version of VO3 this week, called VO3 Fast. So this is obviously just a faster version of VO3. And I'm sure you've been seeing these AI vlog type videos all over the place recently. And so get ready, because you're about to see a ton more. Then there was also some news coming from Mistral, who released Magic Shral, their first reasoning model. This model performs quite well on benchmarks given its size, but where it really stands out is its speed. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison they posted of Magic Shral reasoning versus one of OpenAI's models reasoning. As you can see, it's on a whole other level. And as always with Mistral, this is an open source model. Now, finally, to wrap up this week's recap, as I mentioned briefly in the intro, there's been some rumors floating around surrounding the Sam Altman firing. 
For one, there's apparently a movie being made about it by Amazon MGM Studios, which will apparently be called Artificial. So definitely excited about that. But here's where it gets really weird. Just a disclaimer, the guy reporting this claim, Jeremy Corbell, who you may know of from the UFO slash UAP scene, is not exactly the most credible guy. I mean, he's kind of known as the guy who always has insider Pentagon information, like a high definition shot of an alien or something, but he can't talk about it or show you it. So that's the kind of guy we're dealing with here. And so take this with a grain of salt, but here's what he's saying. Look, I don't speak for Matt. Matt speaks for himself. But for now, I'll just tell you what I saw. So this is my opinion, what I saw in, um, in Matt's tweet. So first thing is the AI assertions. There were three main assertions. And, and I, I don't know, is this correct information? Um, I think people need to speak for themselves. But the first one was that the White House has long possessed a unique AI capable of accurately predicting a range of future events. Um, he also brought up that Sam Altman betrayed Elon, which is a very public thing. And I think people understand a little bit about what that's about in popular culture. But when he was talking about you know, murdering a synthetic sentience, um, you know, from what was in the public realm, to be clear, he's talking about Sam Altman. The um, assertion is that Sam Altman and why he was thrown out of the company is because he quote unquote murdered or deleted or however you want to say it, a true AGI or synthetic sentience. And that has been speculated a whole bunch in the media about what was going on when Altman was in all that hot water. So, Anyway, that's kind of to decode what Matt was saying um, when he says, you know, we have not forgotten who is responsible for murdering the first sentient artificial intelligence created in the public realm. That's what he was talking about. That's the assertion. Now, I think everybody's going to have to kind of hear more about that and learn about that. So, yeah, again, take this with a grain of salt. And I have no idea how he's gotten himself involved in this. But the idea that Altman got fired for unaliving the first public sentient AGI is just insane to think about. I mean, I'd say there's probably less than a 1% chance this is actually true, but definitely amusing to think about. Anyway, if you found this recap useful, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and also let me know what you thought of that Jeremy Corbell clip. Is it total BS? Or could there actually be something to it? And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.